Guys, it is Sunday evening, it is 10.47. I've just got back from the gym, so I'm looking a little bit of a mess, but I thought I've got to jump on the camera and tell you how I'm feeling, because I tell you what, I'll be straight up, I'm absolutely myself. I've just, I've been driving home from the gym thinking about everything tomorrow, getting a little bit anxious, I was getting a little bit emotional. Even over the years, maybe the last, I don't know, probably like four years, we've had obviously all of the, um, the whole process, I've always sort of just had a little bit of a laugh, a little bit of a joke and didn't really, I don't know, I don't think I really think anything was actually going to happen at the end. I mean, we're so blessed because now they've sussed out everything, it's fine with myself, everything's fine with Tay. There isn't really anything that we should be sort of anxious about because everything's well. I mean, there's obviously loads of other people in such a more challenging situation and there's people going through IVF and trying for years and stuff. So we're in such a blessed situation. So everything should be exciting, which it is. But I don't know. I don't know whether I'm nervous. The fact that it might not happen now. Now we're so ready for it or whether just that it's gonna happen, you know? We're, we're gonna be a mum and dad. The whole situation just seems so crazy that we, we're gonna go in there tomorrow and, and Taylor's insemination is only gonna last like five minutes and then they'd be like, oh, that's it, on your way. And, and then you wait a couple of weeks and that's it. Let's hope it all goes well tomorrow. I'm feeling really, really excited and really nervous with the whole thing. So right now I'm like, holy <laughs> it's happening. Hey guys, I know that Jack has just been and done his little um, evening thoughts, so thought I'd join doing mine. We have the IUI tomorrow. Actually, surprisingly, feeling so relaxed. Had a bit of a cry earlier on, so over something really small, so not because of the IUI, but definitely feel like I'm at a point where I'm very hormonal now. Um, but that's no surprise, you know, I've been on how long have I been on the syringes for now, Jack? I've been on injections for two weeks. I had a trigger shot, which makes ovulation come on at 9 p.m. yesterday. So I'm feeling a little bit like emotional, but not about the IUI. I feel really relaxed, to be honest. I kind of feel like we've been a bit distracted today as well because we've had some problems with the dog. We found a tick in Boo's neck. They were scratching Boo. <laughs> kissing him and then she felt like a mole and was like oh my god he's got a massive mole on him and obviously your first thing is you oh panic my god. and then i looked closely at it and you said it's a ladybug it's a ladybird so i start trying to pull the ladybird up and it's stuck i'm like the ladybird's latched on and then you were like no i it's a tick it's an ingrained tick so i've been trying to... its legs are stuck, stuck into boo's skin to suck the blood Oh, um, I'm so sorry, girl. I've really scared you. Now on the way to the vets. I'm driving, not going. <laughs> I think we've massively um, over exaggerated that. We've been to the vets. And Babe, we're... it's hanging off. Yeah, but watch, I think it's quite common out here. So they're actually due for their ticks treatment again. That's why we've got some. She was like, yeah, she's just sprayed it. They don't take it off for some reason. And she's basically just sprayed it and said in an hour's time it'll be loose. So just we're off. not leaving it to chance. Again, the she out. says just go and put some more ticket thing on. So But the scary thing is, she said if he's got one, he's got multiple. <laughs> so we were in there like driving to the vets at like 300 miles an hour thinking that this is like serious and ticks give humans Lyme disease. Cam. Good boy, boo. Good boy. To get rid of his wolf. Oh so handsome. You can see, you probably see the tick. So. Oh my god, it's fucking huge. Good girl, Shmiko. Good girl, Shmiko. So now I'm going to get the tweezers and I'm going to give it a good old yank. Someone clearly doesn't want his tick removed. Come on, boo. I kind of feel like almost that. I know some people don't believe in the universe, but I really do. I feel like the universe has been kind of dropping other things today for me to kind of be distracted and not overthink it because I am an overthinker. But yeah, I'm feeling really good about it, to be honest. You know, any time that anything's happened to me, it's kind of happened for me. And that's what I've got to remember. That if it doesn't happen this time, that it's for a reason and, you know, something's going to come along and, you know, it will be 
because it's the right thing for us. So I've just got to remember that. Um, but yeah, they said literally going in tomorrow is going to be nothing more than like a five minute appointment really to actually do the th insemination. It's kind of like not even really much more abrasive than getting a swab. So I'm not expecting anything crazy tomorrow. Probably do that and then have to stay in the air on the stirrups with my legs out. But my dignity, to be honest with you, is so out of the window now. I've been having checkups like every few days. I think the doctor's probably sick of seeing my vagina, <laughs> to be honest. I think the thing for me from when we've done the insemination tomorrow will just be then the wait because it's obviously two weeks wait before you can find out whether it worked or not. And I'm such a fantasizer. I've been fantasizing and visualizing myself with a baby bump, with having a baby and what our future looks like every single night. It's what I actually get to sleep thinking about. It almost feels like an X factor moment for me. The fact that I could be pregnant, it would be like winning the lottery because it's felt so unattainable for so long. But I'm also in a place where I feel like I've kind of almost blocked it out that if it doesn't happen, that it's okay. But we will see, I'm sure, you know, I would be upset if it didn't happen, of course I would be. But yeah, feeling good. We have to hope that Jack's sperm is good. We know that it's good, but I mean the actual amount <laughs> of it is good enough for it to all take place. And I'm sure the doctors know what they're doing, but you just have to hope that they have got the right day because it's it so matters that you've got the timing completely exactly right with the ovulation. Let's pray. I've already been looking at the due date as well. It would be born. If we conceive tomorrow, it would be born. The due date would be March the 14th, four days before my birthday. And it would also mean that our baby is gonna be a Pisces like us. It's very exciting. Let's hope and see whether we create the first baby what's tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow for D-Day. I'm really desperate for a win. <laughs> Try to relax. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put it in the I finished. Finish? Yes. What? <laughs> so, obviously, we just had the, um, the scenario go on. And now that's it for the next couple of weeks. There is a little bit of a story about this morning. <laughs> so I went down to the clinic and obviously I had to get there. But half 10 I had to be there and Taylor was supposed to arrive at 12. But I thought, do you know what, I'm going to get there early. I'm going to get there really prepared. So I got there at 10 o'clock and obviously I've got to do my deed. So I do my deed. I left. Felt like an absolute champ. Felt like this has gone well. And he texted me to say, done it. On my way. On my way. I like to, to, come, and, in, to I, come and pick me up. And I then. Had, wait, let me <laughs> tell. I had a little bit of a swing in my skirt, morning over on. Get in the car, and I'm, I'm texting Tay like, yeah, couldn't be going any better. Next minute, I'm about to set off. Tay then FaceTimes me with a really sad face going, the, the sample was no good. You need to go back. There was the volume's bad. <laughs> I didn't say that. And I was like, you were looking up at me on. But she weren't. So for about three minutes, I was looking at her face like, this ain't really a kind of day to joke about that kind of <laughs> And she wasn't joking. I was like, that doesn't make sense. So obviously, and I was like, go back to do what? No, you just sent me that. And then the clinic, I seen HC ringing me. And I was like, they went, hey, you need to let John know that he We've just seen the sample, but he needs And if you to... don't know, John is my real name. Yeah. Jack is my nickname. Yeah. So if they go, hey, John, that's why. <laughs> so they said um, the volume isn't enough to do the procedure. So he needs to come back. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was thinking, he ain't going to be able to work again. <laughs> like, it's common knowledge that, you know, once you've got it out, it's very hard to go and do it again. I mean, Jesus, he's not... <laughs> It might be gorgeous, but he ain't Superman. Let me finish the story. So, come off the hour, come off the man. I go back there like, what do you want me to do then? Um, what do you mean the sample was no good? And, and then, then I got some more details. When I got more information from them, it wasn't as You're bad as it seemed. <laughs> So basically she said, oh, we would prefer more volume. So ideally, if you, you know, 
here's the room and, and off you tattle sort of thing. So I was like, right. So anyway, we uh, we managed to get a second sample. <laughs> I was in there for all of this morning. In all and, uh, of your life, I've never known you to do that. It did the double, the FA Cup and the Premier League all in one. And um, and then he came, it's okay. picked me up after he'd done his second one. And then I go in, fairly pain free, a little bit uncomfortable when the catheter's going in, plus the fact they told me to come with a fairly full bladder and I really did. But literally less than five minutes, it was all done. She was like, done. And I was like, no. She was like, yeah, it's all done. And then after they take the catheter out where they've obviously inserted the sperm, she then puts the thing in that looks like a giant dildo um that's obviously an ultrasound <laughs> i'm going to check if you have ovulate okay no. have i ovulated yes both of them Round two. Oh, perfect and then she was like yep yeah, you've ovulated with two eggs and i was like and we knew we had two mature eggs because that's we've known that since they were growing there's been two like yeah. prominent eggs but she said yeah you've ovulated with two eggs and then she pointed it out she was like you see that that's the sperm and uh, now it's up to them to, to mate, to like meet each other. Oh my God, that is so crazy. <laughs> How good, Jack? I know. Did you see it? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's good to say that. Oh no, I'll be late. Yeah. yeah. Nothing as bad as that. Did you see it? The white thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was so quick, wasn't it? Yeah. Tiny bit uncomfortable, but nothing much. There's about two million sperm. And she said that we're going to go with eight million. To increase the chances of it happening, so it should be extremely likely. <laughs> it's really exciting, isn't it? I just, I just can't help but think of two eggs and eight million. Got a good uh, chat. Could be twins, couldn't it? Do you really want to? Just want, just want a healthy baby and, and just be happy with whatever happens. I can't believe it's all just done like that. If you could choose twins, I would be like, oh, absolutely. I just think the thought of having twins would be phenomenal. Your parents can say, yeah, it's easy for you to say, you never heard of one. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you don't have to carry them. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Hello. Hello. Have to stay like this now so that the sperm is it's easy for it to travel if it's kind of, if you're on a tilt. So I mean, it's like, it goes like that. Right. I need to know the aftercare, like what's best to do, what's not best to do for the next two weeks. <laughs> I can't believe two eggs have dropped. I know. Okay? Yeah. It's okay now? <coughs> Thank you. You can pee. Yeah! <laughs> So, uh -huh. we are doing the blood test on the 22nd. Yeah. Uh, till then, like normal life. It, can you go, can I go to the gym and all of that? Or really? did no at uh, weights or just cardio? No problem. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and this is the prescription for the progesterone. So from Friday the 11th. Yeah. Okay. One egg. Yeah. Night time before going to bed. One egg. Yeah, what is this? Yes. Oh, is it injection again? No, 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 no it's an egg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. One, one, one tablet inside my yeah, child. Yes. Okay. From the 11th? Yes. Yeah. Okay. At night time. Night time, yes. Okay? So yeah. that would be you can feel really strange with the progesterone. Okay. Maybe like a little bit dizziness. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like sore breasts. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. This is the prescription. Make yeah. a pregnancy. Okay. <laughs> so what is what is the progesterone for? To help. Para ayudar a la implantación. To help it implant. Yes. When does a when does an implant normally happen? 
in one week. Any week. Any week. Or in mañana. So see you on the 22nd for the blast. Ah. So she also <laughs> said before we left, she was like, So today, make love tonight. Oh, okay. Or to the organs. I don't think he's got anything left in his mouth. Jack, at this point, he's expelled. <laughs> <laughs> no more. No, no more. more. <laughs> She's like, you need to have sex. And I'm like, does it have to be tonight? Because I'm not sure he's got, I've got nothing left. I'm not sure he's got anything left. And she's like, yeah, it has to be tonight. So I'm going to do a little treble. I'm going to do a little bit. FA Cup, Premier League and the Carabao Cup. When you get uh, an orgasm, it makes, uh, they get, like, get together like okay. more. Yeah. Six, three, yes. Yes. Love that. What I understood is the reason for this is the, the sort of making kind of love. Trick to trick is, the yeah, egg and the sperm makes, to meet. Yeah, because it they're it like, encourages Ooh, them to to meet each other because they think they're actually mating. Yeah. So our blood test is the 22nd of June. That's gonna be our, I hope maybe the best day of our lives. I just don't know. Also from Friday, when hopefully the implantations happened, then I have to start taking progesterone tablets, little tiny tablets that you have to insert into your vagina every day. I didn't hear her saying that. I yeah. thought you, you no, swallowed them. No, into your vagina. I don't remember that conversation. She said, she said in your vagina. Like vagina. Oh, okay. One tablet inside my yeah, vagina. Yes. Okay. Right. And she said it, they could make you feel a bit pregnant. Like sore boobs, a bit dizzy. Yeah, I heard like that. that yeah. So that's where we're at. So now it'd be it's funny just... if that was wrong and you're supposed to take them and you're just a naughty vagina. Well, I don't think I would have just kind of made up that. Oh, no, we'll probably double check. Just that. fancied putting them in my vagina. Mm. And they said, live normal life. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep you updated. Gonna go a full day today, and we're really, really excited. Bye. Bye. How are you feeling? Really, really nauseous. Like, I have a really bad stomach, which I could feel a few hours ago. And, yeah, I've just got a really bad headache, which I thought was toothache, but I just feel really sick and like, like really fevery. But I've Googled and it says that, yeah, it's something to do with the IUI procedure. A lot of women can feel diarrhea, fever, nausea, chills, and I've got every single one. I'm grateful that I had it, but I do feel a bit like shit. Obviously, it's so worth it, but most people say it lasts about two to three days. Yeah, I'll get into bed and shag me. <laughs> After that diarrhea? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I've said to Taylor so many times, do not take any pregnancy tests at all. I want to wait until the Monday. And, See, that's uh, easier said than done because your body's not going through the whole thing. Yeah. You're not looking and feeling every m movement and thing and thinking, wow, this could be, you know, it's not your body. Okay, well, I was like, maybe, maybe let's take the pregnancy test together. But anyway... Taylor's what, took you want me to be on it right next to you? <laughs> I want to see what's going on. So anyway, Taylor's took how many tests you took now? Three and all so I did do one today. You did do it. So, okay, she's just lied to me now. She said, I said, when did you last take one? So you've done all four. So I went to the shop, I got a pack of four. Oh uh, no, I've done three. I've got one left. You've got one left. And I think Tay did one on the, on the first day after no, you got inseminated. I no, I did it on day eight, day nine, and day ten. Today is day ten. So they've all been negative, and on Monday is when we find out officially from HC Clinic. So I've just been playing a little bit of FIFA in a good mood, and I've come in here, and Tay said, "Do you know what? I don't think that it's." I thought my feelings are, I don't think that it's worked. 
that's your gut feeling. That's my gut feeling. I know that everyone's different, been reading into everything and how like people can implant at different times, which then obviously your body st has to start um, producing the hormone HCG for it to show on a uh, pregnancy test and everyone's happens at different times which is why some people can get a really early positive pregnancy test and then for some people it takes you know the 14 15 days or whatever but my gut feeling is just telling me and obviously you can be positive all you want and especially like for the first few days after when when it gets to this stage it's kind of like you got to have some sense of realism because really kind of now by now the situation would have happened if it was going to happen by the Monday that's gone this week, so it's Thursday now, like the Monday, which was four days ago, um, I would have implanted if I was gonna implant. That's what the doctor said. I n there's now nothing, obviously, that we can do that would change the situation. And I, my gut feeling is just telling me that it's a no. So we're both sat here like, quite sad now. I mm. think the... Um, Maybe the tests are too early. Yeah, no, there's definitely potential for the tests to be too early. But, I don't know, my best friend, she got a, pre a positive pregnancy test on day 10, so I think it's just, it's knocked my confidence a bit. But then maybe that's how it works. I mean, they did say on the Monday is when you find out. Mm. I'm fully preparing for it now. Mm. And then we've said, okay, well, we'll just do the same thing again. I don't really know whether I could, I would want to put myself through this again, even though it's not been necessarily like hard physically, as in like I've not really felt too many side effects. Mentally, it's such a process where you get, you kind of forget everything else and you get so focused. When you're going through this kind of situation, it's all you can do because, you know, you're on new medication, you have to do this at a certain time, you have to go in, you have to be monitored. You know, there's so many things, you can't not focus on it. Whereas I completely disagree. Because you're not doing it. Um, it's kind of like, I'm not trying to be offensive or anything. Mm. Like, and probably a lot of women will understand this, but like, as the man, you're just kind of waiting for the good bit. You know, like you're just thinking, is it gonna happen? Is it not? That's all you have to worry about. And you go about your day and probably don't even give it too much thought unless we're having a conversation about it. Whereas to me, every day is like, okay, another day passed. Do my injection or take my progesterone that's making my stomach bloat. I'm feeling the effects of doing this and then having the mental thing and all of that. I don't know, I think I'm in that mindset now and I don't like to be in this mindset, but like, you know, if it don't work, you just think, oh, fucking hell, why? Bother. Like, why would I want to do all that again? Everything works for both of us. Everything is literally what a normal person who's getting pregnant would have. So the fact that it might not work and that I don't think it's probably worked, it just makes me think, like, why? OK, this is what I think. I think we should not take any more tests. No, and I'm going to tell you why. If I said no, I'd be lying to you again. <laughs> <laughs> because the last thing I want, I'm actually a little bit anxious and stressing mm. at the fact of going on Monday and getting a hard no. Whereas I would like to actually know myself first, then go and be prepared for the, for a no. Because otherwise, I know I'll just burst out crying and I'll be really embarrassed. Let's take a test every day then. Well, you just gonna get me four more then? Imagine if this was the pregnancy speaking. <laughs> Like <laughs> Morning guys, can't see because I've not even got my contact lenses in right now. I literally just got out of bed and said to Jack me to um, do the pregnancy test so I've just, just peed on it and now I just have to wait for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to get my dressing gown on. Not pregnant. No. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the wee. Three days till we actually go and get the blood test. Just can't see changing. Well, I have some faith. He's not that happy. All I'm going to say on the matter is. If they had said 
there's a reason why they said, come in after two weeks on a Monday. Isn't there? If they had said, come in after 10 days or eight days or nine days, then they would have said that. They've said two weeks for a reason. Because maybe sometime it doesn't show before two weeks. So I think I have faith in what they're, they're gonna say over a pregnancy test really, really early. I think, you know, let's not worry. Let's listen to the experts. If you had to give some odds, it's probably like so, so, so likely that you're pregnant from what the process is. If there's only a 20% chance, you can get around pregnant with IUI. Is there what, sorry? Only a 20% chance you get pregnant with IUI. 20% chance? Yeah. Not more chance of just having sex then. It's ridiculous. <laughs> nah, I, I don't know why you dragged that number. Oh, I'm not. She said to me, there's four times the amount of sperm, they've chose the best sperm, there's two eggs. They are, yeah, this is, she feels like, yeah, this is, yeah, this is pretty much a dead set. She did not say that. <clears throat> she said that to me. I said, how likely is it? I said, okay, so now it's like ridiculously likely. And she was like, this is really... I like I don't want to do it all again if it didn't work. <laughs> let's, let's, let's wait until they tell us, because do you know what this is? This is called... Where you live through something all of the pain through it before it's actually happened. You know, I just can't see this changing for three days' time. <laughs> you know, I've just thought of something. Do the progesterone tablets you're taking, they could be affecting the... the, the Pregnancy test? No. I thought you said that's how... I thought you said that's how pregnancy test works. It works on the amount of progesterone your body produces. No, HCG. It's a different hormone. Yeah, but you, progesterone might be affecting the... No, they, that wouldn't, they wouldn't give it you if it was doing that. They're not going to worry about how it affects a pregnancy test. They didn't say that, they would say that. I do know what, if you, I, I drop them a message. I've already messaged them. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what, I'm very certain and I don't like seeing you like this. I don't like seeing the pair of you like this. <laughs> Come on, you two. Let's get, let's, uh, let's have a good day. Hello guys, so it is now Monday and we, well, we're having the blood test tomorrow which is the final day which is Tuesday. Um, we were really quite positive the last couple of days. I we wasn't. We stopped. I wasn't. Well you were today, so you, we stopped I taking the... I um, about it being positive. Honestly, I think since Thursday last week and then obviously today where I've kind of like forced myself to just start over almost just had some really bad days where i'm just like searching for answers like if you've been trying to conceive yourself like you've been there and done that maybe now you've got your baby or you're in a situation where you're still in that kind of frame of mind you'll know like google becomes your best friend and your worst enemy all at the same time and that like two week wait is just a killer and obviously i'd started doing pregnancy tests from day seven do not recommend that Obviously I haven't had a, a positive pregnancy test this whole time so my gut feeling that I just know it's not worked. I have been going back and forth with things on Google, searching for every symptom, looking for green veins on my boobs, flicking my nipples to see if they're sore, everything that you can, haven't I? Everything that you, you did can have. You did have sore nipples yesterday. Yeah but that's because obviously my period's starting now. Jack, 
bless him this morning didn't want me to have any more days like I'd had like over the weekend so he woke up and he said look let's go on a bit of an adventure today let's just go see some places we've not seen before we'll go get breakfast somewhere nice like let's get dressed nice get a coffee and just get out and it was really really lovely I'm sorry I'm so tired and like obviously we've known all day today that the blood test is tomorrow but I've just had it in my gut like it's just not our time i want it to be our time but it's just not happened this time with the iui and then i went to the toilet earlier and i was spotting blood and i always spot before i come on my period but it's only spotting it's not fully confirmed and yeah. in any case um it's been a really really emotional last week i think the, I was fine with the injections and everything, but just waiting and having the negative pregnancy tests each day and the progesterone, which gives you all the symptoms of pregnancy um, and you know can make you feel really depressed, which it had. To be honest with you, I'm in such a good place in my life with my mindset and healthy eating and everything, because you know, I'm in such a good place that I don't really ever feel like that now. Obviously, I'm not bloody happy clapping and <laughs> celebrating life every day and I don't just wake up feeling woohoo but I don't ever really have days where I'm like I actually feel depressed and like I'm reevaluating my life and I don't want to leave the house and I don't want to move but that's genuinely what I felt like since Thursday it's just a lot it's like so much to deal with I can't imagine because this is such a like a non-abrasive fertility process. It's nothing compared to IVF. IVF is like savage compared with this because my sister's done IVF. So I know a lot about it. What I've read, I read like a few hundred comments on this website. To be fair, most of them actually said it didn't work the first time. And a lot of people said it happened the second. Why? I wonder why. Or the third. Okay guys, so it is Tuesday and we are literally just outside the HC clinic now. I've since googled that spotting could be, could mean that um, could be some kind of wall implanted egg. Yeah, and I've looked into that and it's, it's too late for that to happen. So that happens between 6 and 12 days, we're on day 14, but 15. day 15, but that's a little bit more optimism. But um, I'm not optimistic. You're not optimistic at and all. I'm absolutely exhausted. So we're going to go in there now and let's see what they say. I've taken all the home tasks and stuff. So. Oh, you did? Yeah, I've done all of them when I could have. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, let's see. Yeah. Taylor's just had the blood test. And now, we wait until 12 o'clock. We've got our fingers crossed, but I think we're just expecting a no now. But also, it's like your whole life could change if they called up and said yes. So it's a very, very weird feeling. Okay, we're back home. So what are you gonna do for the next hour until we find out? Lie in bed and cry. Okay, it's 10 past 12 and they've still not called, so Taylor's text them and they've read it. How are you feeling? <laughs> I don't know why my heart's pounding because I don't even know the answer. <laughs> my heart is absolutely racing. Anxiety. I've never felt so anxious in my whole life. It, and it's crazy because I already know. Oh, text him, type him. They're typing? Mm. Oh. Hello, not ready yet. <laughs> Oh, I thought you said no then. It says results pending. It's now nearly one o'clock. We still haven't heard anything. I'm so anxious. So anxious. So anxious. It says pending. Taylor's watching the film. So keep you updated. So we've been asked to give her a call. My heart is absolutely racing. Hello. Hi, Taylor. Hello, how are you? 
Yeah, I, I did think so. Mm, yeah, but I mean, uh, do not feel like down uh, because it, the first attempt, usually, you know, we have more successful rates on the second and third attempt, so okay. it's normal, you know? Yeah. Thank okay. you, bye. Thank you, Taylor. Bye. bye. Told you good night. No. Oh, what a shame. I just knew it. Although physically the IUI wasn't extremely hard, the whole mental journey as i've already mentioned and it being such a controlled process it did really get to me because you live in this own little world where really all you can really focus on is this potential pregnancy it's like such a controlled thing with the medication and then the two week wait which i know everybody has to go through who you know wants to conceive but it is a really difficult thing and I felt especially in the two week wait I was just in this like cloud of limbo where I'm waiting and it's almost like a mental battle that you're having with yourself it's hard because you want it more than anything but you also get to a stage where you're like I just I'm, I don't even want it now you know I can't think like that I can't afford to think like that because it's not happened for me naturally four years of being ready for a baby trying for a baby and nothing's happened, so I don't have the luxury to think like that. What's that then? Yeah, my heart stopped racing now. Now I know it's a no. Yeah, I'll try it one more time. Yeah, I'm not going to try it a third time. Yeah, I'll try it one more time. I'm not going to try it a third time. I'll try it one more time, and after that, if it doesn't work, I'll do IVF. Okay, and just one thing to add. I never told Taylor this story, by the way. Because I was too embarrassed. Um, I get to the lab in Marbella. I said, I'm also doing the sperm test. Have you got the tube? And is it the normal? I'll bring it back tomorrow before 10 o'clock. And she was like, no, no, you um, do it here. And I was like, here? And she's like, yeah. Out there, there's a toilet on the left. So I walk outside and there's, there's a waiting room, a small waiting room with about 20 people. And next to it, the, there's the toilet. And I'm looking, I'm like, I'm looking around at everyone. I've got my tube, my bag of, bag of goodies. And I'm like, nah, nah, this is weird. So I go and have a look anyway. I go in the toilet. It's a single toilet. Now you all know, at least if there was multiple toilets, people could go into other toilets, but there's not, there's this one toilet now. Well, what's if someone in the queue, in the waiting area, needs to come toilet, and I'm in the toilet for however long? So I get in the toilet, it is a double door. There's a door, there's a seat, and then there's another door and the toilet. So I get in this in this little bit, and I'm like, in the, in the sink section, and uh, I'm like, nah, <laughs> I'm like, no way. <laughs> I can hear everyone outside. Ah, she, must, she must have got it wrong. And there's no lock on the second door. There is on the toilet door, but there's not on the second door. So you're, um, you know, someone could come in that door and then you're in there. So I'm like, and it's unisex as well, so it could be a woman. I'm like, so I go back outside and I go up to the woman at the reception. It's a different reception. And I say, excuse me, I've got this tube and um, I'm gonna, I need to, apparently need to take a fertility test here in there. And she said, fertility? Yes, toilet. I'm like, in there? And she's like, yes, in there. So I was like, what am I doing? So I go back in the toilet and then I'm like, do you know what? Someone could walk in. They need to know that I'm here. So I like start like leaving my phone, my wallet and keys in, the, in that area. And then I'm like, well, if someone comes in the door and robs all my stuff, 
even worse. So then I'm like, well, what can I leave? So I'm like taking my shoes off and I'm like getting my shoes and like leaving them near the sink, one shoe near the door. So if someone was to come in, they'd be like, ah, oh, okay, someone's in here. Weirdly, his shoes are off, but he's in here. So um, anyway, you know, it has to be done for the baby. So I um, left there and then I remember coming out of there and I was just like, what the f has just happened? Never, I'm never repeating this again. And then I, um, yeah, I went home and, and never spoke of it again until today. So yeah, that was that test. It was, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd rather the home test in your own comforts.